Paige Beckers, the comeback kid, had to watch from the sidelines last season. Paige Beckers scoops it up and in. Here's Beckers stepping outside the line. Beckers collects, spins baseline, tough shot, gets it to go. Just too talented. Beckers off the bounce, pulls up in the lane for two. And Utah knocks out a number one seed. Of what's going on right now in the present, and you don't really appreciate what's happened in the past. That really motivates you and you use it as fuel during your rehab to get back stronger, to get back even better and make people remember you. Paige Beckers was propped up to become the next face of women's basketball. Her come up in women's high school basketball was unlike anything we've ever seen before. She had the entire basketball world talking about her and people were ready to call her the next WNBA star when she was still in high school. Fast forward to today, she has had a great run at UConn and looks to continue to develop and elevate her game. And now with the recent senior class of Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese and others heading to the WNBA, it looks like Paige will become the face of women's college basketball next year. But how good is Paige Beckers actually? We'll dive into the insane rise of Paige Beckers from her high school days, reflect on her incredible run at UConn so far, and discuss how we think she'll develop at the next level of her basketball career. Paige Beckers grew up in Minnesota and first picked up a basketball at five years old. She was a multi-sport athlete as well, playing Little League baseball as a catcher and also playing football and soccer. She clearly had a knack for sports at a young age, but absolutely thrived in basketball. She started playing high school basketball in just 7th grade, playing for the 10th grade and JV level teams. And once she made it to the 8th grade, she was moved up to the varsity team. Her next four years of high school basketball were nothing short of spectacular. In her freshman season debut, she had 28 points, 4 assists, and 5 steals. She finished her freshman season with averages of 20.8 points, 4.5 rebounds, 4.5 steals, and 4.1 assists per game. Her sophomore year was much of the same dominance as she averaged 22.3 points, 6.8 assists, and 5.9 rebounds per game and won the Minnesota Gatorade Player of the Year. Her junior year, she averaged 24.4 points, 5.1 assists, 4.9 rebounds, and 4.6 steals per game. She also managed to score 43 points in the state championship win, surpass 2,000 career points, and secure a perfect 32-0 record that season. Her junior year could not have gone much better, and she started to gain lots of national media attention for being so incredible. Heading into her senior year, the hype was built already. In fact, she became the first female high school player to be featured on the cover of Slam magazine. She averaged 21.4 points, 9.4 assists, 5 rebounds, and a crazy 5.4 steals per game. She also led Hopkins to another undefeated season, 62 consecutive wins, and a trip to the Class 4A state championship game, although the championship game ended up being canceled due to COVID. She was also named Gatorade Female High School Athlete of the Year, National Player of the Year, Naismith Prep Player of the Year, Morgan Wooden National Player of the Year, and Minnesota Miss Basketball. Beckers was a five-star recruit and ranked the number one overall player in the 2020 class by ESPN. She was ranked higher than both Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese on all recruiting platforms without any hesitation. She eventually would commit to play for women's basketball powerhouse UConn, who at the time brought in 11 of the last 22 number one ranked recruits in women's basketball. Entering her freshman year at UConn, she was all the talk around women's college basketball, an incredible talent out of high school that would transcend the sport to new heights. UConn has been known for being the most dominant program and bringing in the best players, but Paige might have been the best recruit the school had in over a decade. Because of this hype, the basketball world was tuned in to see her college debut. She made her debut on December 12, 2020 against UMass Lowell. She had 17 points, 9 rebounds, 5 assists, and 5 steals in an insane 56-point blowout win. 
and talking about her entire freshman year as a whole, she sure lived up to the hype. On February 3rd, she had a season-high 32 points along with 7 assists in a 94-62 blowout win over St. John's. This was the highest scoring game by a UConn freshman since Tina Charles in 2007. And just two days later, she added another impressive 30-point performance in an 87-58 blowout win over Marquette. In her following appearance, Beckers tallied 31 points, 6 steals, and 5 assists while scoring the last 13 points in a 63-59 overtime victory against South Carolina, the top-ranked team in the AP poll. This made her the first player in UConn history to score 30 points in three consecutive games. On February 27th, Beckers recorded 20 points, a UConn record 14 assists, and 7 rebounds in a 97-68 win against Butler. After leading UConn to the Big East regular season championship, she was awarded Big East Player of the Year and Big East Freshman of the Year, joining Maya Moore as the only individuals to win both titles in the same season. She was also unanimously selected to the first team All-Big East and the Big East All-Freshman team. On March 8th, in the Big East Tournament Final, Beckers scored 23 points, grabbed 6 rebounds, and dished out 4 assists in the 73-39 destruction of Marquette, earning the Big East Tournament's Most Outstanding Player. On March 21st, in the first round of the 2021 NCAA Tournament, Beckers scored 24 points, grabbed 9 rebounds, dished out 6 assists, and had 4 steals in a 102-59 victory over 16th-seeded High Point. Her 24 points set a record for the highest points scored by a UConn player in their tournament debut. Beckers then went on to score a game-leading 28 points in a close 69-67 win against second-seeded Baylor in the Elite Eight propelling UConn to its 13th consecutive Final Four appearance. However, UConn fell to third-seeded Arizona 69-59 in the Final Four, concluding the season with a 28-2 record. Despite the loss, Beckers was named to the Final Four All-Tournament team and swept all major National Player of the Year awards she was eligible for, including AP Player of the Year, Naismith College Player of the Year, USBWA Women's National Player of the Year, and the John R. Wooden Award, marking her as the first freshman ever to win any of these honors. She was also a unanimous first-team All-American, securing spots on the AP and USBWA first teams and the Women's Basketball Coaches Association WBCA, Coaches All-America team. Additionally, she was the first freshman to clinch the Nancy Lieberman Award as the nation's top point guard. Beckers also shared two major NCAA Division I Freshman of the Year awards with Caitlin Clark of Iowa, the Tamika Catchings Award by the USBWA, and the WBCA Freshman of the Year Award. In her first season, she averaged 20 points, 5.8 assists, 4.9 rebounds, and 2.3 steals per game while shooting a ridiculous 46.4% from three. She also set a new record for the most assists by a freshman at UConn with 168. In July 2021, Beckers was honored with the Best Female College Athlete ESPY Award. Analysts regard her freshman season as one of the finest in both UConn and NCAA history. It's safe to say that Paige Beckers was the buzz around women's college basketball in just her freshman year, and was even more impressive than Caitlin Clark at this point. On April 30th, 2021, Paige Beckers underwent right ankle surgery to repair an osteochondral defect, which involves damage to both the bone and cartilage. She was unable to participate in most off-season activities due to her recovery, but was medically cleared by October. As she entered her second season, Beckers was unanimously chosen as the Big East Preseason Player of the Year and named to the AP Preseason All-America team. Beckers returned to action on November 14, 2021, scoring a career-high 34 points along with 6 rebounds and 4 assists in a 95-80 victory over Arkansas. This matched the program's record for most points in a season opener, a record set by Kerry Bascom in 1989. 
On December 5th, Beckers sustained a left knee injury during a game against Notre Dame, resulting in a tibial plateau fracture that required a six to eight week recovery period. She had surgery on December 13th to fix the fracture and a previously undisclosed tear in her lateral meniscus, extending her time off the court to eight weeks. During her recovery, UConn recorded a 15-4 mark, but dropped out of the top 10 in the AP poll for the first time since 2005, and saw their long-standing winning streaks against unranked and conference teams come to an end. Beckers was cleared to play against St. John's on February 25th. She came off the bench for the first time ever in her career. She still managed to score 8 points in just 13 minutes in a 93-38 win. She continued to play limited minutes leading up until the NCAA tournament. Despite scoring only two points in the Big East Tournament Championship against Villanova, UConn clinched the title. Her scoring average dropped post-injury. However, Beckers showed up when it mattered most. In the Elite Eight of the 2022 NCAA Tournament, Beckers led UConn to a 91-87 double overtime victory against top-seeded NC State and secured a spot in their 14th consecutive Final Four. She scored 27 points, including 15 in overtime, and earned most outstanding player honors at the Bridgeport Regional. In the Final Four matchup against Stanford, Beckers had 14 points, 5 assists, and 4 rebounds in a tight 63-58 win over the defending champions. However, in the national championship game, UConn could not get it done against powerhouse South Carolina. Beckers did, however, score 14 points in the loss. Even in her sophomore season where she faced a two-month-long injury and was not 100% healthy, she managed to end the season with averages of 14.6 points, 4 rebounds, and 3.9 assists per game while earning a spot on the Final Four All-Tournament team. She was also recognized as an AP All-American Honorable Mention. While Paige and UConn didn't bring home the title in her sophomore year, Paige was ready to train all summer and get back to the championship game after the tough loss to South Carolina. However, on August 1, 2022, Paige tore her ACL in her left knee during a pickup game, leading to her to miss the entire 2022-23 season. After her ACL injury, Beckers took a redshirt year for the 2022-23 season, allowing her an extra year of eligibility going into her junior year. But before we get into her junior year, I wanted to shout out today's video sponsor, Odds Jam. Odds Jam is the best data-driven sports betting software around, with over 260 sports books tracked in real time. Odds Jam will make you a long-term profitable sports better, similar to the techniques used by investors and traders to beat the market. Now, how is this all possible, you may ask? The Odds Jam Arbitrage Tool. This tool is used to identify inefficiencies or discrepancies in sports betting lines across the entire market, so you can always get the best value on your picks. The tool will even give you arbitrage betting opportunities that make you risk-free money by identifying those discrepancies for you. The tool will find discrepancies so wide that you can bet on both sides of the market and guarantee yourself a profit. Aside from all the value you're getting from just the arbitrage tool, OddsGym even has a positive EV calculator that helps you make optimal bet sizes for your specific bankroll and a bet tracker that will sync your bets across all of your sportsbook accounts to track your daily, weekly, or monthly profit for you. Odds Jam gives you a much more strategic and responsible way to bet, making you more profitable in the long run. They even offer a 7-day free trial because they know their product works. If you want to give them a try, use code HOOPDUNGEON for 35% off your first month using the link below. Going back to the 2022-23 season, many might be wondering how UConn performed without Paige. Well, UConn was defeated by Ohio State in the Sweet 16 of the NCAA Tournament, marking their first absence from the Final Four since 2008. Heading into the past season on August 9, 2023, Beckers announced her full clearance to return to basketball. 
As she entered her redshirt junior season, she was recognized as an AP preseason All-American and as the Big East preseason player of the year. She made her season debut on November 8th, scoring 8 points, grabbing 7 rebounds, and dishing out 4 assists in just 21 minutes during a 102-58 victory over Dayton. On November 16th, she scored 31 points in a game against the second-ranked UCLA at the Cayman Islands Classic, though her team fell 78-67. to On December 10th, she matched Maya Moore's record as the fastest UConn player to reach 1,000 career points, achieving this milestone in 55 games, with a 26-point performance and a 76-64 win over North Carolina. On January 17, 2024, Beckers recorded a season-high 32 points and 7 rebounds in an 83-59 win against Seton Hall. By the end of this past season, she earned the Big East Player of the Year title and was a unanimous first-team all-conference selection. During the Big East tournament, Beckers was outstanding, scoring 27 points and blocking 5 shots in the final, leading her team to a 78-42 victory over Georgetown and earning the Most Outstanding Player Award. In the NCAA tournament's second round, she equaled her season high of 32 points and added 10 rebounds, 6 assists, and 4 steals in the 72-64 victory over Syracuse. In the Elite Eight, she scored 28 points, 10 rebounds, and 6 assists in an 80-73 win over Juju Watkins in top-seeded USC. However, in the Final Four game against Caitlin Clark in top-seeded Iowa, Beckers and UConn lost in a narrow 71-69 loss. For a second time, she was named a unanimous first-team All-American by the WBCA coaches, the AP, and the USBWA. And while many people anticipated Paige to head right to the WNBA, she made her decision to stay at UConn for the 2024-2025 season, despite projections of her being a top three pick in the 2024 WNBA draft. As Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese, and others went to the NBA, it looks like the spotlight will all be on Paige next year. And truthfully, if she gets treated like the face of women's college basketball like Caitlin Clark was this past season, it's the logical move to stay in school. She'll earn so much more money in NIL deals compared to what her rookie WNBA salary would have been if she declared. So honestly, I don't really blame her for maximizing her years in college basketball. But as we anticipate Paige being the best player in women's college basketball next year and the top pick in next year's WNBA draft, let's break her down as a prospect. Standing at 6 feet tall, her combination of size, speed, and agility has been widely praised by analysts. She excels in the passing game, with great court vision and defensive interpretation. Analyst Monica McNutt has described her as arguably one of the best playmakers in the game. And as a scorer, she can score at all three levels. Her signature move is a pull-up jumper shot, which UConn associate head coach Chris Daly has compared to Sue Bird's. Her style of play has been likened to Diana Taurasi, reflecting her confidence and scoring prowess, with coach Ariema noting similarities to Brianna Stewart as well. Beckers has taken inspiration from Taurasi and Kyrie Irving in shaping her game. From her high school days, Beckers has been touted as a generational talent by several analysts and coaches, including South Carolina's Don Staley and Cheryl Reeve of the Minnesota Lynx. In her first college season, she was heralded as basketball's next big thing by USA Today and named the top player in women's basketball by Tarasi. But is it safe to say that Caitlin Clark took her spotlight this past season? With Clark's rise, it's safe to say that Clark did have the spotlight all season, but there seems to be some disliking from WNBA players regarding Clark's rapid rise in media attention. In the Final Four matchup, Sue Bird and Diana Taurasi vividly say that they would take Paige over Caitlin Clark live on TV. And I'm all for a good debate, but why is that the topic of discussion during the Final Four? Save that talk for a podcast. It was clear that WNBA players are getting jealous of Clark. 
But while the debates, remarks, and criticisms have been shared by WNBA players, it should be recognized that both Paige Beckers and Caitlin Clark are two incredible standout stars in women's basketball. And truthfully, Caitlin Clark brought a whole new attention to women's basketball that hasn't been seen before, and while her fan base and popularity will carry over to the WNBA, Paige will be the catalyst to keep the college game exciting next year. And while Clark has dominated the media attention that Paige was once the feature of, Paige is poised to have the same influence next year that Clark had this past season. Even while facing setbacks due to injuries, Paige has showcased resilience and skill that hint that her potential to become the new face of the game is still very real. But what are your thoughts? Will Paige Beckers be the face of women's college basketball next season? Let us know in the comments below.